This is why we have established our presence in India and China, because those are fast emerging, not only as alternate centers of innovation, but they're emerging as uh, uh, markets in their own right for products and services. So, you know, high-level trends that I see on the enterprise side, some of these are probably cliches that you see, and you, I'm, I'm probably not telling you something you don't already know. You know, I'm a big fan of SaaS uh, for the right kind of uh, offering. I'm a big fan of cloud computing and actually cloud storage. I have an investment in a cloud storage company because I felt like the friction to get uh, cloud storage in was uh, lesser than to actually uh, enable uh, companies migrate their um, uh, applications uh, over into the cloud. And I was talking to Jim just now, and they seem to have some pretty interesting solutions. We'd love to learn more. And uh, virtualization, uh, we had invest investment in Zen. We were investors in Zen uh, that got bought by uh, Citrix. And I think virtualization has changed a lot, uh, particularly when you think about it from the perspective of server virtualization. But we're scratching the surface. There's a lot going on in desktop virtualization. There's a lot going on in storage virtualization. I think there's still storage to me is actually sort of uh, the last horizon. Uh, storage is the one thing that is still yet to get commoditized. Right? You can think of compute getting commoditized, networking getting commoditized, but storage is one thing. You know, people are paying ridiculous amounts of money uh, to to uh, have a proper solution, and I think there's an opportunity there as well. Um, mobility in the enterprise is a very interesting trend, particularly with the emergence of, you know, the, I think the iPad is a killer device. iPad or similar kinds of devices are going to be very, very important even in the context of the enterprise. Um, social. So this, I was just talking to Jim uh, offline, and we hold this annual uh, TLC, what we call the TLC, the Technology Leadership uh, Council meeting. We invite CIOs and CTOs of some very large companies. And uh, one of the things that caught us by surprise when we sort of interviewed them was they said, you know, uh, we'd love to use, you know, social media in some way, but use it within the context of an enterprise, right? And to be honest with you, I've been seen, I've seen a bunch of companies that have tried to solve this, but they've tried to mimic uh, Facebook, uh, and I don't think that's the solution for it. Uh, and it, it, it requires too much of a behavioral change there. Wow. <laughs> and um, finally, a quick word on the energy side of things. Um, this is an area I think, uh, and I think you can even think about energy from the perspective of uh, IT as well, because energy is such a key part of your OPEX. You know, one of the interesting things that uh, uh, that uh, Google, uh, a, a interesting note about Google's expenses, now OPEX has actually exceeded CapEx for Google in terms of how much they spend on uh, uh, you know, energy and uh, heat dissipation and things like that. So uh, even if you can think of solutions there, that those are uh, uh, interesting areas of innovation. But when I think about energy, I'm thinking about it more from the perspective of uh, three primary areas. Uh, energy generation, energy storage, and energy management. Um, energy generation, obviously, uh, you know that uh, uh, there is uh, a lot of, uh, there, there's a thirst for clean energy and clean electrons. So, you know, we have quite a bit of, uh, quite a few investments in the uh, solar space, in um, solid oxide fuel cells, in um, wind, and, and things like that. But one interesting area that I feel, and especially you know, given uh, our common uh, uh, ethnicity here, uh, I think water is a very important resource here. A lot of people kind of ignore how important water is because without water, you actually don't have energy too. In fact, even if you think about it, uh, I actually visited a, uh, a drilling station, an onshore drilling station in uh, Gujarat, and you'll be amazed as to how much water is used to pump out even oil from underground. Right, because they literally sort of flush the thing and it bubbles back up. Right? So uh, having clean water is a big, big need, um, uh, whether it be for industrial purposes or drinking purposes. You know, there's a lot of interesting things going on around desalination, wastewater retreatment, reclamation, things like that. But I think it's a huge problem, uh, particularly in India. In a lot of the emerging countries, it's a huge problem. And uh, 
Energy storage is another uh, very important uh, issue here because it's one thing to be able to uh, generate electricity, but you know if you're thinking about say something like solar, uh, it's not enough to just to be able to generate electricity because uh, solar is uh, only for half the day at best, uh, and so you need to be able to generate it and store it so you can use it uh, at, uh, at later uh, later in the day, and uh, there are lots of yeah, innovation that's happening in the battery technology and new chemistries and things like that. But then again, I still think there's so much more that can be done. Um, and finally, on the energy management side, you know, uh, I think we we have so much more that we can do. Um, there's actually a wonderful presentation by a um, Caltech professor. Uh, that I would encourage you guys to uh, check out. Uh, it should be available on the internet. Um, his name is, um, I think it's uh, Jake Lewis or something like that. Um, he talks about uh, essentially what his views are on the uh, future of energy generation and uh, paints somewhat of a pessimistic picture. Uh, he even criticizes God for uh, making leaves green. He says that uh, leaves should have been designed as black in color. So you could capture more of the uh, photons. Uh, anyway, it's, a, it's a really interesting presentation. So, uh, but I think energy management is an interesting area because uh, we waste so much energy and there's so much that we could do. Uh, and this is where I think you can combine uh, IT with uh, analog and digital devices and be able to control them and put some intelligence. So, with that, you know, covered a lot of ground. I'll stop there. Open it up to any questions. Uh, Everything is fair. Yeah. Uh, you covered about the uh, enterprise applications and the mobile. So, what are the uh, major uh, uh, things we can do in the enterprise? Because uh, uh, today, if you look at it, uh, most of the mobile applications are uh, mainly uh, customer oriented or something. But uh, still, uh, because of the technology or the security issues or something, enterprise applications are always. Uh, Yeah, I think, you know... Um, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. Uh, question was, you know, what, where is the opportunity, uh, where do I see the opportunity for enterprise applications in the mobile space? And, uh, uh, you know, when I think about mobile, I'm actually throwing a much wider net than just, you know, your cell phone or your smartphone. Uh, I actually am including tablet devices like the iPad, uh, especially because I think that changes the form factor. Uh, quite a bit and makes it uh, much more uh, uh, readily consumable kind of uh, form factor. And so I think that there are a lot of uh, enterprise apps today that mobile users, you know, when I think about an enterprise uh, environment, you know, there are the knowledge workers or the task workers who are pretty much tethered to one office. They're probably not the target uh, user. The target user is really the mobile user, the sales guy or the marketing guy who's on the road all the time, um, or the executive who's on the road all the time. And for them, being able to access specific applications, whether that be your CRM application or whether that be your, uh, uh, your, your uh, uh, ERP application or what have you, uh, and being able to access that um, you know, quickly and be able to make some quick decisions and things like that. Those are interesting areas. You're right that uh, a lot of these environments don't solve uh, security. You know, I remember talking to the C CIO of Morgan Stanley, and he was talking about how there is a proliferation of these mobile devices even then. And he said, you know, it's a hopeless battle for me to try and control these mobile devices. You know, take the BlackBerry for instance. You know, for a long period of time. The BlackBerry sent all of our email in, in the clear, you know, and, uh, in, and, and the IT department fought a losing battle to try and get that under control, but then it was such a huge productivity gain for the, uh, for the employees, they said, you know, that overrode their security concerns. Um, I mean, think about even uh, Barack Obama wanting a BlackBerry, you know, and uh, so, 
but I think, you know, as you move into these new devices and new form factors,